Welcome to Homeschool Together, we're touring the world with Torchlight Level K and Build Your Library Level Zero, and this week we're in Central America and the Caribbean. I'm supposed to be doing the intros. Well, we're mixing it up. <laughs> but before we begin, thanks for so much for joining us on Homeschool Together. Um, head down to the show notes. We got all of our information, our resource guides, all the information that we'll be talking about today, yep. links to our podcast, links to everything, all of our social media, so we, we look forward to talking with you. But this week was a quick week. It was. Typically, we're, we've been doing a combination of a week of Build Your Library and a week of Torchlight. So we're doing two weeks. We did two weeks in Canada, two weeks in the United States, two weeks in Mexico. This, however, does not have a Build Your Library and Torchlight mm -hmm. Week combination. It's just Torchlight Week, and it covers all of Central America and all of the Caribbean, which was a lot of countries. I mean, you're looking at... <laughs> potentially two dozen countries. So it was very difficult right. to, was really to, hard. to prioritize. And I think going back with the same type of themes that we've been talking about in the last few videos is mm -hmm. really focusing and honing in your topics. For this time, we did a lot of music and that was our big focus. You know, if you're gonna touch 24 countries, you can't touch them all. Right. You can only do a very shallow dive and I don't even think we hit some of them. So we really did a, a narrow focus on music and like always food food <laughs> so food more for central america and music yeah, for the caribbean for the caribbean and that was our main thing so let's talk about the spine uh, we have another spine that we want to recommend to you guys mm -hmm. following in the footsteps of our love for dk yes, which if you're is, out there dk we love you come on uh so this book this is countries of the world our world in pictures mm -hmm. It's a fabulous DK book. One of the things we've got is there's a, there's an atlas recommended for Torchlight. There's a different atlas for Build Your Library. There's an animal atlas used for Build Your Library. But the one thing that none of those books do is cover every country. Mm -hmm. And when we're covering something small like Central America. Yeah, that's actually a great example right here. here. Guatemala. Yeah, we've got Mexico. Belize here on the bottom. Turn the page. Yeah. We've got uh, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica. Every country gets its own bit even if it's just a part of a page there's a map mm -hmm. a couple of interesting facts something to take away and we found that when it came to these smaller areas looking in our big atlas it was just kind of like it's all together and we wanted something that gave our daughter a little bit more sense this is a fabulous book we recommend that you purchase this we are going to hold on to this for many years to come it's a great quick resource um, so highly recommend countries of the world great way to pair like um, if you're doing your globe study uh, reading three or four countries finding them on the map that's kind of how we used yeah. it and that was it was really effective so right. um, let's talk about the first book that we want to talk about we actually recommend you to purchase this one fantastic book called Islandborn. This was a recommendation from Torchlight. Yeah, so basically it's a story of a young girl who's been tasked by her um, teacher and in her class to tell her story of where she's from. And for her, she's forgotten anything about the island and this island would be um, Dominican Republic. And she doesn't know, she doesn't understand where she came from, she has some ideas. So she goes around in her community, family, friends, people in her neighborhood, asks them about what they remember, and she ends up building this enormous um, picture diagram of all of their memories of the island, and then presenting that to the school. It's an absolutely fantastic book, very sweet. Great message. Great message, but also like our daughter really identified with it. She, she was interested in the island, she was interested in all the experiences, really locked in. I really recommend you guys uh, checking out this book, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm, exactly. Next one would be All the Way to Havana. This is another Torchlight recommendation book. S soft recommendation to purchase, but if you can't, definitely get it from the library. So this is obviously centered in Cuba. And it's a snapshot of a, of a family trying to get across the island to go meet um, a, a, their, their more extended family because there's been a birth in the family and they mm -hmm. want to bring a gift and they have to ride the cars. And if you understand with the embargo, it kind of like closed off in a snapshot and all the cars were these old classic American cars like old Buicks and old uh, mm -hmm. Cadillacs and everything. And so that was the centerpiece is this blue, I think the Buick yeah. in, the, in the centerpiece of the story and that, you know, it barely runs. They got to put it together with, <laughs> with duck and, and duct tape and, and rubber bands and whatever. And they have to really try to get it going. It's a really nice snapshot of like what Cuba used to be and then all, also the degradation due to the, the embargo and everything. So it was, it, was a, it was interesting to learn about it. And, you know, as much as my daughter enjoyed this, I enjoyed it because my dad has been to Cuba and he told me the exact same story of all these old cars that you know, rusted out floor pants and everything. It's, it's a really interesting story. Unfortunate it is the way it is, but 
it's a good um, introduction to Cuba for a young learner. Yeah, especially for kids. It's hard to talk about some of these really difficult geopolitical mm -hmm. problems. Yeah. And so, you know, if we can get a, a children's book that kind of presents it in a way that they can understand, yeah. and this is this totally fits that bill. Let me sit you down and explain to you about nuclear weapons. Right, it's <laughs> just, <laughs> sometimes it's really tough. So let's get into music. And so I chose music as kind of the centerpiece and obviously one of the most popular musicians in um, the Caribbean and of all time is Bob Marley. And so we really focused on music and the, one of the centerpieces was Bob Marley, really light, fun, ex mm -hmm. great songs, except for Ariel, she remembers this from I Am Legend. <laughs> she will never listen to the song ever again. They killed the dog, they I, killed I the couldn't dog go ever. beyond it. I, I just <laughs> couldn't listen to it for years. But my daughter didn't, I didn't show her that on YouTube. <laughs> I instead <laughs> went for the music videos of Bob Marley singing the song. Really great um, touchstone. She had never heard reggae music before. I think she really enjoyed it. It's always very yeah. fun and uplifting, something you can dance to. She was dancing to reggae music all week. So it was a really nice beginning thing. And this was just cute. So it's basically the whole lyrics with a little bit, I think, extension of the lyrics. Right, they changed the lyrics yeah. a bit to make it more like more of a story and more applicable for kids. Exactly. And so she loved it. Basically, you're just reading the story of Three Little Birds. It's a really great little book. Definitely recommend you getting this from the library. It was very enjoyable and a nice touchstone into Bob Marley and the music of the area. So mm -hmm. um, next two are, are kind of a double recommendation for yeah. books. It's all about steel drums. And so in Caribbean music, steel drums is you know, this widely This isn't necessarily used. steel drums. This it's is really just, just drums, drums in general. But then, then the drummer boy was basically the origin, not origin, but kind of the original uh, creator of kind of the steel drums. And right. it kind of goes through that whole process of uh, the discovery of in a junkyard where he's throwing rocks and it's really lively and then mm -hmm. both of these books were nice touchstones into YouTube videos about steel drums and yeah. Caribbean music and a lot of the, the rhythms and the mm -hmm. beats. There's a lot of Cecilia Cruz this week. We didn't really find a book that we really liked no, there. No, we didn't. Um, but these the, were good music books. Though. Yeah, but, but that was another element that also fed into this. So good drumming books. We enjoyed both of these. Yeah. And we recommend you get, get them from the library. Yeah. Right. These were library books. Um, drum Dream Girl is all about a girl who wants to drum. And of course, as a girl, she's not allowed to. And so she has to overcome that. Yeah. So especially if you have a daughter, this one our daughter really identified with. I If you have a son, maybe not identify as well with this one. Mm -hmm. But that's why these are both kind of lighter recommendations. But great. Or if you can find any other books from your library about music, we would highly recommend that you do that. Absolutely. So. Oh, this one I really liked. You read this one. I yeah. actually didn't get to this one. This is, uh, Rene has two last names, and this is about a boy from El Salvador, and he has last names from both of his grandparents. And so when he moves to the U.S., his teacher shortens it, and it's only Rene Collado instead of, I think it was Rene Collado oh. uh, Linez. Linez. And so he was trying to explain to his classmates, like, well, you can't just leave off one of my last names because that's a whole side of my family mm -hmm. and the history of that side of the family and what that means to me. And that's the memories of my grandfather doing mm -hmm. this or my grandmother mm -hmm. doing this or my aunt and all of how both sides of his family played so much into um, who he was and into his El Salvadorian culture. Mm -hmm. And it was just presented with such cute graphics. And it's actually written by the the author moved as a teen to the u.s and that this is his name mm -hmm. and so he had this experience which i just thought L was really cool. autobiographically yeah. Yeah. yeah so we really enjoyed it and thought it was a good introduction to some uh, about culture and about naming so well, really, it was cute it was well, really cute family book. has been a recurring theme that we've had in the last few episodes where we've mm -hmm. talked about that and i've noticed our daughter talking a little bit more about grandma and grandpa um, wanting to learn more about the family and stuff. So great touchstones, good messaging, uh, good themes to pull into your homeschooling. So Yeah, this is be the third week in a row after United States Native Peoples and then Mexico and now this where family has been just such a big recurring theme that our kindergartner can really identify with. Next one is the golden flower, the Taino myth uh, uh, of, the Puerto Rico. of Puerto Rico. This is the origin story Native peoples of Puerto Rico. So very interesting, very deep folklore -y type of story. Very really cool, gra uh, cool illustrations. Yeah, like, like with <laughs> with all folk folklore stories, we were kind of laughing about this today. Yeah, it can kind of be very strange. This one was about a, a pumpkin that ex you know opened up and water poured out and created the island of Puerto Rico, and mm -hmm. and it was about two two I think brothers fighting. Yeah. And, uh, Artwork's very cool, very interesting. Kind of a blend of the native peoples, but also of the Caribbean island origin. Um, nice little book to read. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Our daughter enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it more than our daughter, but it was a it was a good read. I enjoyed it. Yeah, good good get from the library. 
Yeah, then we had a chapter book. Yeah, so the chapter book that we were supposed to read this week for Torchlight was Mercy Watson book. That's based on our plan. Mercy Watson goes to the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, it was Mercy yeah. Watson fights crime, which was very good. We're going to talk about all the Mercy Watson books at the end when we get to the end of the sixth one. This is a book I found called Sky Above. Um, it's really great. It's about a girl who travels with her family to Port to uh, I'm sorry, not Puerto Rico. You were just talking about Puerto yeah. Rico to Costa Rica, and it's basically like a kids chapter ver book version of a travel brochure to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. She does um, uh, parasailing and she does zip lining and she goes to bird sanctuaries and she goes snorkeling with baby turtles and it, it's ba that's basically what it is. <laughs> but it's great because it's celebrating all the diverse uh, flora and fauna of Costa Rica and mm -hmm. all the fun that this girl had uh, going on a trip there. And so it made our daughter say, when can we go? And so I thought that was great. Now. It was very short, um, very accessible. It's got just some neat little pencil drawing illustrations. It was a quick chapter read. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say for this uh, this week, this is the best chapter book that we have found that you could get to apply. If you have another recommendation, we would absolutely love to hear it. But we found that the other books just didn't have anything that pertained to this actual region. They were just good kids books. So anyway, this is the one that I found for Costa Rica. Absolutely. So with food, we always love food. We went to El we Salvador. We made bean and cheese pupusas, which are Ooh. basically corn. There was like a corn pancake -y it, was, it was like dough. It was a corn meal, almost like you're making um, corn, corn tortillas. tortillas. Yeah. And then packed with a little bit of um, beans and jack cheese. Yeah. And you kind of fold it up and ours looked terrible and tasted delicious. Oh, yeah. Um, but you kind of pat them out and you're trying not to have beans and cheese leak out all over you, the place. You we cook them on a flat on a Totally flat unsuccessful. Pan. It doesn't matter. They were fantastic. They were fantastic. We, we just cooked them in a hot pan, kind of pulled them apart, stringy cheese and beans and dipped them in guacamole and salsa. Our girls absolutely yeah, loved it. Both girls did. Uh, it was super easy to make. It didn't matter that they were completely messy and imperfect. It just meant that we had crispy cheese and beans on the outside. So um, it was great and we were, we were saying, wow, this is yet another recipe after doing Mexico and doing churros and the burrito tacos exactly, yeah. and things were like, wow, we're adding a lot to our repertoire of things I would make again. We absolutely would make these again. They were easy, uh, very quick, and we'll link the recipe down in the show notes here, but super, super good. We absolutely. loved them. We, we ate way too many and they were so hot. They were delicious. hot. They were eating them right off the pan. It was too hot. Yeah, but, make, uh, make. It was a great recipe. We, we loved it. We did a little bit of science this week um, mm -hmm. in, in the theme of music. Um, it was a very simple... Well, you adapted it, though. I did, yeah. I think that's important. Well, it was basically changing the volume of water in glasses. And um, this was a big science little people uh, yeah. experiment, which is a, the Torchlight which a science a, book. And we, we I built off that, and, and I did multiple glasses. I had both girls playing carefully <laughs> uh, with spoons and little uh, silverware, and they were playing songs, and I had my daughters changing the volume of water. And so it was a really nice kind of musical science experiment talking about volume and water and sound. It was it was a nice thing. I think she really enjoyed it. Right, because you listen to a lot of steel drum music and other types mm -hmm. of Caribbean kind of lighter music. And then you had these water glasses they were playing. It, mm -hmm. it was cool. And we were trying to find a way to tie in the science. Sometimes the science and the art, especially with Torchlight, because the, the yeah. art book is not a global art book. It's no. just a, um, a collage type book. And then the science book, of course, doesn't, a lot of times they don't connect at all with what we're mm -hmm. doing. So we're trying to bring them back in. I think you did a, I think you did like an ecosystem a little ecosystem one week with yeah. Mexico and yep. we tried to bring it into the you know what the jungle is like and talking about that biome well, and, and, and part of and part so. of the study with around the world is we do the biome research we we understand like okay this area of the world has deserts and mm -hmm. you know forest and tundra and grasslands and so doing little terrariums and stuff can help bring in that understanding so. right but well, we're trying to always connect it and I don't think there's anything in the curriculum that really makes a connection so mm. we're trying to find some way to kind of like bring it in like it was meant to be part mm -hmm. of this country study. And, and that's not a genius move a lot of times that's accidental but. <laughs> no, he's very <laughs> modest <laughs> it is what it is um we've also been enjoying the let's talk a little bit about the animals versus the trek thing okay so build your library has um, an animal research component every week where mm -hmm. you're supposed to research an animal from that country or group of countries in this case and you're supposed to do a little research page draw a picture write a couple things about it and for torchlight it's a torchlight trek article like you're mm -hmm. making a, a travel journal 
journal around the world. You're, the very first you're supposed to write an author bio and then each week you're supposed to choose um, a person or a place mm -hmm. or a cultural item that you're going to write an article about. Personally for us we found that that Torchlight Trek part is too advanced for our five and a half year old. Mm -hmm. She doesn't write that much. Even if we write for her, that's a lot for her to think of and put together. Mm -hmm. She is connected very well with the animal research part of it mm -hmm. because it's a little picture she gets to draw. It's a couple of words about it. It's and, and the, much and, more accessible. And the print offs you give me are from? Yeah, the yeah. print offs are from the back of the Build Your Library curriculum. So we've decided that we're basically just doing an animal research mm -hmm. every week. Uh, the weeks where we do a Build Your Library and Torchlight combo in two weeks we're just doing one animal research for the whole two weeks and we find that for our five-year-old this is really enough I think yeah. when we come back around to this and she's eight and our younger is five I might have her do the trek article I would have her do the yeah. trek article but for a five-year-old even an early six-year-old I feel like the trek article could be a bit intense so mm -hmm. just know that we aren't actually doing that part of it we've determined it's a bit too much for our, our daughter yeah and, and that's the thing with this combination is that you can purge things that maybe aren't not connecting with your learner or that maybe you don't necessarily enjoy doing like you know for me the poetry stuff is not always my He's thing. Having a problem with the poetry. I'm having guys. troubles with poetry thing. <laughs> we need good poetry recommendations. <laughs> and we've had a couple of recommendations in the community we've bought those books they're better um, but it's it's a struggle for us so always know that you can you know mold and adapt you yeah. can change you can take things out put things in always have that little bit of eclectic nature in you that you can always tweak things so you don't always have to make it perfect it's not a letter of the law. Don't feel bad if you kick out one thing. Like this week, I don't think we did the collage uh, thing because I just didn't have the materials yeah. and it was raining and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay if you don't do that. So make sure you know that. Um, don't stress sure. out about those type of things. So definitely there. And we did sloths this week. So it was a really nice, uh, you know, Central America and then kind of leading right into South America, which is where we're going this week. Right, we have some more sloth stuff coming up. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we did, and again, the animal research is another great way to kind of get into like a YouTube uh, spiral of a lot of videos and enjoying and doing that research and watching a lot of videos. Another thing I like to do, I've done it a couple times now, is take the video camera, have my learner kind of give a little book report of the animal after she's drawn the picture and she's done like, what do they like to eat? So I ask questions and I film and I send it to grandma and grandpa. So it's a yeah. nice little way to kind of get that presentation mode. We've talked about this on the podcast, yeah. actually getting her to like regurgitate what she's learned right. and, 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 and explain what she's learned as opposed to just doing it and forgetting about it. So I, I have done a little bit of that and you might find that to be helpful in your in your uh, homeschool area and what, whatever you guys are doing. Right. So next week we are doing a, or currently right now as we this film week, yeah. this, we're doing an overview of South America mm -hmm. and then we're going to start into Brazil. So we'll do two weeks in Brazil. We're going to come back with a video on our Brazil wrap up and we'll talk about our overview of South America mm -hmm. at the same time. So this is it. We're leaving North America behind. Can you believe we already got through? We are one continent down. It's sometimes when you're going around the world, you don't go around, you go south. So the boozes are heading 180 <laughs> degrees south, this, which is a great documentary if you get a chance to check that out. But 180 degrees south going to South There's America. going to be more delicious food. There's going to be more amazing animals. Oh, God, I feel myself plumping out already. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll, Thanks for when joining us. we get us. back from Brazil. <laughs>